Hi guys, welcome to Cloud Tech. Uh, one of our students recently attended Infosys interview and in the interview uh, he got selected. So these are some of the questions from that interview. So let's get started. Uh, I have a candidate with me. We are going to perform the mock interview. So the first question is, uh, we have a for loop and in that for loop, uh, we are printing hello world. So uh, can you tell me what is the time complexity of the above loop? Okay, so if you see the for loop, it is going to start from zero and it is going to execute till it is less, uh, the value of i is less than n. So definitely it is going to execute n times. So the time complexity of this for loop should be a big O of n. Big O of n. And yeah, what correct. is big O in this case? Big O is like worst case uh, situation. So it is going to execute maximum n times. Okay. All right. Uh, what if I just modify this loop to have one more loop inside this? So I have nested loop, uh, one loop inside another, and that loop is also running n times. So in that case, what do you think should be the time complexity? Uh, so in that case, what will happen? The inner loop will execute n times again. So it will become a kind of n square. So it will be a big O of n square. Okay. Uh, in this case, uh, if n is three, then what should be the number of iterations? So if it is uh, one loop, then definitely it will be three iterations at max. Okay. And if there are uh, inner loops, then it will be three square. That means maximum nine iterations. Perfect. Uh, that's good. Uh, let's move on to our next question. Uh, what is default methods uh, in Java 8 and uh, why it is required in, in the interface? Okay, so if you see a default method which is introduced in Java 8 interfaces and these methods are basically used to provide a default implementation. So if you specify a default keyword with a method signature, then that method becomes a default method and you can write body of that particular method. So you can provide implementation of a function and that becomes a default method. Okay. So is there any limit on number of default methods in the interface? Uh, no, you can have a number of default methods inside the interface. Okay. And what about abstract methods? Is there any limit on having abstract method, number of abstract method in the interface? So in Java 8 interfaces, if the interface is a functional interface, then you can write only one abstract <laughs> method. But if the interface is not functional interface, then you can have a number of abstract methods. Okay, so when you say uh, it, if the interface is a functional interface, uh, how do I mark my interface as a functional interface? Is there any mechanism in Java? It? Yeah, you can use add direct functional interface annotation to mark that particular interface as a functional interface. Okay, and uh, what if I mark my functional interface using this annotation and then I try to add two abstract method into that interface what will happen so that is not possible because your interface is a functional interface and if you mark any interface as a functional interface you cannot have more than one abstract method so compiler will give you a compilation error okay so it's a compiled error compiler will notify me that you cannot add uh, two abstract method in a functional interface all right yes correct Perfect. Uh, what are some of the predefined functional interfaces in Java 8? Have you, have you, if you yeah, go ahead. Mm, yeah. So we have function that is uh, one of the interface, which is functional interface. Then we have predicate or consumer. So few, these are the few examples which are there in Java 8. Okay. All right. Perfect. So Java 8 has already uh, provided some functional interfaces. That's good. Mm, yes. All right. Uh, can you briefly tell me what is the syntax of Lambda expression in Java 8? So Lambda expression basically uh, has a syntax of, uh, let us consider you want to implement a method. Uh, normally this Lambda expression is used to implement functional interface and which has a method. So you don't need to write the entire method signature. You can simply write only that method function declaration part. Then uh, you can pass the parameters if that function has some parameters. Then you can use arrow that is basically hyphen and greater than sign. And if your method body has only one sentence, then you can write that sentence. 
if your method has multiple sentence then you can write curly brackets and inside that curly bracket you can write all the statements of that function all right perfect uh, so you you are you told that uh, lambda expressions are used to provide implementation of functional interfaces so if i don't want to uh, use lambda expression how do i provide implementation of a functional interface can i do that using classes in java yes you can use classes and define a method that will provide implementation of your uh the uh method which is the abstract method which is declared inside your functional interface okay perfect all right so that's good uh, let's move on to the next question mm, what is http and how it works so h yeah, http stands for hypertext transfer protocol and it is used to exchange the information between client and server all right uh, so how is the uh, is if i if i pass some text from client to server uh, how how does it pa get passed to the server is it plain text in case of http yeah and yeah in case of http it is a plain text okay and uh, what about https so if you use https it is going to secure your uh, information while transferring to the server so it will encrypt that information and send it to the server all right uh, perfect perfect that's good so um, let's move on to the next question we have streams in java 8 so do you know what are terminal and intermediate operations in java 8 mm, yeah so by using streams terminal operation we can collect the result set which is performed or which is uh, uh, which is implemented or you can say what uh, which is executed by your intermediate operation so let us consider you have a filter which is a intermediate operation and after filtering the result set you want to collect that result into a list so that two list is an intermediate uh, terminal operation okay and uh, uh, what about are intermediate operations executed if i don't perform terminal operation uh, no that won't be possible okay perfect so that's good um, can you can you tell me some of the intermediate operations in stream name of the intermediate operations so filter is one of the intermediate operation that is used to filter your result set you have map operation that can be used to map your uh, results then uh, yeah these are the few operations which yeah. are available correct that's fine perfect uh, let's move on to uh, the next question which is uh, there are two methods find first and find any okay so what is the difference between these two okay. methods find first and find any so find first will find the first record in the result set and it will return to the client mm -hmm. and find any return any record which is in the result set so if there are multiple records in the result set then it will give you any record from that result set okay can i determine uh, which record will be returned in find any no no that is uh, can, that cannot be determined okay so it is non deterministic okay. yes correct all right all right uh, that's good uh, what is concurrent modification exception in java uh, concurrent modification exception occurs when you try to modify your collection concurrently or simultaneously let us consider you are iterating over a hash map okay now while iterating you try to modify the structure of hash map by adding or removing an element into the hash map so in that case it will throw an concurrent modification exception okay okay and uh, you said uh, while iterating if i try to modify the structure of uh, the collection then it will give concurrent modification exception so what if i use um, hash table which is thread self so will it result in concurrent yeah. modification exception a uh, hash table is also a thread self but it, if you see the hash table if multiple threads try to access that hash table the thread will acquire a lock on the entire table but in case of concurrent uh, sorry concurrent hash map the lock will be on a single segment 
instead of the entire hash map so if there is a uh, let us consider there are 16 segments in your hash map and now your thread 16 thread simultaneously can access those segments but that is not the case with hash table okay if you try to access yeah go ahead go ahead yeah if you try to access the hash table and perform a write operation so in that case what will happen there will be a lock on entire table and only one thread will be able to access that hash table all right all right so uh, you are saying for hash table only one thread can access uh, the entire hash table but in case of concurrent hash map uh, there are there can be 16 threads that can access different segments of your concurrent hash map yes correct all right uh, consider an example mm, hash map works with the with the concept of buckets okay so okay. i have 32 buckets in my concurrent hash map and the concurrency level is 16 okay then okay how many locks will be there in this case so there will be 16 locks okay and i have 32 buckets then how this locks will be mapped to those 32 buckets so it depends on your concurrency level so the concurrency level is so 16 yeah okay so uh, uh, is there allocation of locks to uh, one bucket or two buckets is there a concept of that sort in concurrent hash map uh, no i don't okay, know right about it yeah that's fine uh, there are uh, two things one is concurrent hash map one is concurrent map what is the difference between uh, these two things uh no i am not sure about concurrent map yeah that's fine no problem uh, let's move on uh, to there's a method uh, compute if absent in concurrent hash map do you know what is the uh, use of that method yeah compute if absent uh, checks whether the key is available or not if the key is already available in your hash map it doesn't uh, put a new entry into concurrent hash map but if the key is not available that means it is absent then it will compute or it will execute the function which is provided for that value and it will uh, put that key and the computed value into that concurrent hash map okay uh, consider an example i have a uh, key 1 already present in my concurrent hash map and it has the value of 2000 okay now if i run compute if absent and provide key 1 okay and i provide the value as 5000 in this case uh, what will be the value of uh, key one when i get it from concurrent hash map so uh, if you have a key one already present in your hash map so you will get the first value which is already there all right perfect thank you uh, let's move on to uh, the next thing which is uh, we have read operations on hash map and we have uh, put operations on hash map so put operation adds some value to the hash map and read operation is to get the value now while reading values from concurrent hash map is the lock acquired on the segment no while reading there won't be any kind of lock on your hash map okay so we can say uh, there can be many threads accessing uh, the same concurrent hash map at a time without concurrency level any number of threads can access concurrent hash map to get the value yes that is correct okay and if i have a write operation on the hash map considering that all the write operations are in different segments okay and my concurrency level is 16 then how many threads can concurrently access this concurrent hash map uh, i guess 16 threads will be able to concurrently access those uh, 16 segments so at a time 16 threads can access all the 16 segments all right all right uh, perfect so we have uh, let's move to uh, the thread section a bit uh, we have wait and notify method and that belong to object class do you do you know the reason why it belongs to object class and not thread class mm, yeah so this wait and notify belongs to object class because your locking mechanism is related to object and it is not related to your thread 
that is the reason it is in object class okay so uh, you are saying that uh, the logs belong to the object uh, rather than the thread that is the reason it's there in, in the object class yes correct okay all right uh, let's move on to the uh, database part what is a uh, deadlock any idea on deadlock in database uh yeah so let us consider you are performing two operations parallelly first operation is inserting some data into a database or updating some data into database and then it is let us consider there are two tables okay first operation is getting performed on table c1 then that thread waits for the second table to complete his operation mm -hmm. and second operation is getting performed on second table t2 table and now this thread waits for the operation which is getting performed on t1 so t1 is waiting for t2 to complete and t2 is waiting for t1 to complete so that is a kind of deadlock okay and uh, uh, if there is a deadlock then how does consider an example if there's a deadlock in sql server then how does sql server uh, prevents this deadlock uh, actually in sql server it automatically prevents deadlock or does it uh, hit uh, roll back the one of the operation for some amount of time and then it complete other operation and then it come back and uh, perform the first operation okay okay so one one transaction will be uh, rolled back yes correct okay and uh, do you know what what are acid properties in database uh yeah so acid stands for atomicity consistency integrity and durability so atomicity means your transaction should be atomic mm -hmm. consistency means your transaction should be consistent it should not be like uh, now the result is coming as true next time when it gets executed the result is coming something else for the same operation so it should be consistent across all the operations mm -hmm. okay yeah all that right. is about us okay properties. perfect so i think uh, that's it from my side i am i'm done with the interview uh, do you have any questions from your side uh, no no questions i don't have anything thank you for joining the interview thank you yeah thank you